You have heard it many times. ATP is energy currency of the cell. But do you know why exactly we have given this label to ATPs? Hello, in this video, we will see how ATPs serve as energy currency. ATPs are like batteries that we use in our day-to-day -day life. To understand how they work as an energy currency, we first need to understand why we need batteries in our day-to-day -day life. Let's get started. We use batteries in various instruments like clock, toys, remote control, etc. The batteries contain energy in a chemical form. This energy goes to instruments and the instruments work. But from where does the energy come to these batteries? Well, the sources can be multiple like solar, kinetic, thermal, etc. We harness energy from these forms, process it and pack it into the batteries. The batteries are then used in multiple devices. Thus, batteries are like the common point in the flow of energy. This arrangement has simplified our life in many ways. Have you ever imagined a world without batteries? In such a world, the instruments would need to run directly on these sources. Let's say we make a clock that runs on solar energy. It will work fine during the day, but at night it will stop. So we add some components that can harness kinetic energy. The wind can keep the clock running during the night. But then the wind can also go down during the night. And this can go on. To maximize the utility of the clock, we would need to make a clock that can utilize as many sources as possible. And the same applies to all the instruments. This arrangement is messy, not only on instrument side, but on the source side also. Because we are connecting each source with multiple instruments. Luckily, we don't live in such a messy world. We have batteries and we have put it at the center. This arrangement has simplified our work on both the sides. Each instrument needs only one component that can run it on batteries. And from each source, we take energy to only one thing, batteries. And of course, if one source is not available, we can use alternate sources. In short, Using a common medium to transfer energy has made our life easy. A similar system works in our body too. Here the source of energy are various carbohydrates, lipids and proteins. ATPs are the common point and enzymes like sodium potassium ATPase pump, calcium ATPase pump, myosin kinase are some of the instruments that run our body. The energy from different nutrients is transferred to a common point, the ATPs. The ATPs are then used by different enzymes. Without ATPs, all the enzymes would need the ability to use all the nutrients directly. For example, sodium potassium pump would need the ability to use energy directly from glucose. If glucose is not available, it should be capable of using fatty acids too. In extreme starvation, it might even need to use proteins. And this will apply to all the enzymes. All the enzymes using all the nutrients and all the nutrients getting used by all the enzymes. This is not a proper work distribution. And that's where the ATPs come in. They serve as a common point in the flow of energy. So the lives on both the sides have become easy. Nutrients empty their energy into a common pool of ATPs. And all the enzymes get the energy from this common pool. And this is not it. ATPs produced by the degradation of one high energy compound can also be used to synthesize another high energy compound. In a nutshell, the body uses ATP as a common medium to transfer energy. This is just like how we use money as a common medium to exchange things. When we have something that others want, we sell it and get money. And when we need something, we buy it and give money. Here, money is the medium to exchange value. Similarly in the body, when molecule wants to release energy, they produce ATPs. And when molecules need energy, they consume ATPs. Thus, ATP is the medium to exchange energy. 
and that's why the ATP is called energy currency of the cell. See, ATPs are not the only medium to transfer energy. There are other molecules also. For example, GTP. But ATPs are by far the most common. So we have given the label to ATPs. I hope you now understand why exactly the ATPs are called energy currency of the cell. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.